All right, hello everybody, Swizzler here, and I am with my buddy, Maddles, an awesome, awesome StarCraft II caster. I cannot say that enough. And today we have a crazy awesome game, game for you guys, Gumiho versus three players in FXO Outnumbered. Maddles, how are you feeling right now? Good. We've we crossed a couple of these games now. We're doing them. I'm going to release them over the next couple of weeks. But the big thing is Gumio has been struggling a little bit because he's been going up against like gold and platinum level players and three of them. So that means three times the macro, three times the resources, three times the stuff. And that's something that he's got to try and overcome. Can he do it this game? Well, he's certainly learning from the games we've seen so far. So I reckon things are looking pretty good for him. Boot camp. This is boot camp for Gumio. And, um, yeah, hopefully he's learning. I'm sure he's learning. He's a pro player. I mean, that's what they do, right? You know, they evolve. You know, they, they, they take a hit, they evolve. You know, they take a hit, they evolve. So, I am expecting to see a crazy game. A crazy game this time around. Because Gumiho, he has the practice. He knows what's going on. He knows what he needs to do to win. Finally. So, so I don't I, imagine yeah. he plays many 3v3s anyway. Because let's face it. Most of these pro players tend to stick to 1v1 where the money's at because you want to be practiced, you want to be doing well in the games that matter. And the balance in 2v2, 3v3, any team games is significantly different to in 1v1. All the timings don't matter, everything completely changes. So Gumio, just going for the wall off here, and this is actually a nicer map I feel for Gumio because he can get this wall off down. Yeah, and unfortunately me and Kong being um, horrible, horrible teammates and not lifting up our, our command centers, uh, horrible, horrible teammates. <laughs> um, but anyways, maybe that'll take some some of the uh, harassment away from, from Gumio. Uh, yeah, but, okay, so what I'm thinking here, Maddles, to, to just think about how the game's gonna flow here, okay? So there's there's two ways I can go. Gumiho, either do what he's doing right now, you know, completely bottle up and just kind of, you know, try to push out, like, kind of early mid-game. You know, maybe take a second base and kind of push out to the, to, to the, the, the map, you know, and kind of push him back. Or he can just go all out and, you know, get his Hellion Harass on, you know, and, and just start getting them out there and try to get in those SCV and, uh, and Zerg uh, drone lines, you know. Get, take that e economic advantage and just, you know, knock it down there. You know, punish. Punish the Gold League players, you know, punish their micro, basically. I think that's a big thing. Reapers on this map as well, which I know Gumio does like using, could be highly effective because there's so much cliff area, but getting this double gas up early, he's teching pretty hardcore style there, Swizzler. So is he going to be going straight up to a star pole, maybe for some drops, maybe for some kind of banshee play, trying to catch his opponent off guard a little bit. Got to be keeping an eye out for that. He's getting up the bunker as well, definitely playing a lot more defensive than we've seen in previous games. Yeah, that's a good point, Maddles. I mean, thinking about it, yeah, Cloaked, I mean, Cloaked... Mm, cloak banshees they would be interesting because you know it's gold league right i mean who knows you know if if the 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 opponents have any any kind of cloak detection or not you know and especially zerg i mean uh, in gold league players don't really worry about cloak detection very much you know yeah that's the big thing that they, they won't get detection down they won't be able to deal with any especially the two zerg players i mean i'm sure many of people watching have been there played zerg at low level Air kills you early game. Oh, it's that this, simple because this, you, you oh, forget battles, it. battles, this marine, he was out there on the ramp, but uh, he was like, screw this, I'm not gonna die now. Runs back to the bunker, and a <laughs> little zerg, zergling wave coming in. Uh, you've got to be careful in this sort of thing. Oh, a tank coming out here for Gumio, who has got himself supply blocked, which isn't so great, but has now cleared that. These zerglings aren't going to be able to make it through the wall. But no expansion coming down from any of his opponents either, so that's actually really good news for Gumio, because it means that in terms of bases, he's relatively equal. In terms of the work count, he's keeping up too, and he's teching pretty intensely. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that the um, the blue Zerg player went, uh, I don't know, was it was it, was it 12 pool? Because he doesn't have his hatchery, second hatchery right now, so I'm not sure what, maybe this isn't really a build, you know, because this is gold league, right? So maybe it's just like uh, kind of throwing stuff out there, I guess, but he, he had the Zerglings up pretty, pretty early, but he didn't do anything with them. So right now, looking at the opponents, I mean, there's not a lot going on right now, you know? So the, the teal Zerg player, he's got his second base coming out, but the blue Zerg player just has one hatchery, queen, uh, you know, not so much going on over there, and there's no second base from the red Terran yet. So, you know, I think that maybe right now, you know, I'm just thinking, Kumiho, 
right now his plan looks like he's gonna kind of barricade you know a little 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 bit behind his his uh, supply depots here get you know two tanks out destroy whatever you know initial enemy force comes in and then from there maybe macro 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 yeah my concern is this wall off isn't complete but i think gumio is about yeah there we go he fixes that with the fourth supply depot but these zerglings coming over for Alex Hammond, the, the blue Zerg player, aren't actually going to be able to get in here because the two tanks are up in a really good spot. There's the bunker oh, battles, there. Battles. Helio is Oops, 100% there's a spire. safe. There's a Spire coming up for the uh, the Teal Zerg uh, player right now. Oh, this could be a bit of a problem for Gumio because in terms of anti-air, he doesn't have too much. Oh, yeah, but he's, but, but he's learned. He's got his Viking out. He, he is. He does have a starport, and he is... Well, he's not pumping out the Vikings, but he's got one out for scouting purposes, probably. And this is really smart. This is really smart. You know, see how good or how bad his players are doing. You know, kind of gauge their skill level. Get in there. See what they're doing, you know. And, and maybe, you know, try to save himself from any kind of, you know, 9 or 12 mutilist, you know, all the Oh, Gumio getting a good drop off there. Yeah, that was a good he drop. He managed to snipe off. Yeah, he got the third base. Did he get the kill? Did he get the blood. kill? No, it was cancelled. But All he right. forced it back. The tank drop is now oh, going to be drops. continuing. Yeah, he's got to do this. This is a bit of a yeah. problem. There's, and this tank doesn't even just jump, just kills the queen. There's, oh, there's nothing, nothing else there. here. A whole ton. Oh, there's no. There's a big drone wave as well. So oh, there's only six no. Zerglings coming out. And against these tanks and Marines, well, the tank will probably get very low, but gets picked up to save it. Very smart play here by Gumio, who's yeah. going to be able to take out a lot of these drones. Yeah, good micro. And, oh, and like, okay, like you were saying, Banshees are coming out. Banshees are coming out right now. Um, there's no cloaking field research ju just yet. This was before cloaking field. Uh, wait, wait. Did it get knocked down? Did the price get knocked down? I think it did, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know if it was, it was on this patch. Yeah, not on this patch. This was just before that. So, but he's still going for it anyway. Screw it, Banshees. All right. And so, yeah, the attack continues by Gumiho. He's just he's using the micro. Oh, but oh, the, oh okay. So yeah, okay. Yeah, that's that's done. But all oh, middles come in now too. Oh man. Oh, Gumiho, Gumiho, he's got to get some Vikings out right now. <laughs> unless, unless he needs some Vikings, yeah. he needs some Marines, uh, he needs a lot of stuff. He's actually, did he cancel that Banshee? I uh, think so. No, he didn't. He canceled no? the second one. The okay. first one is out, but he canceled the second out. one and is now going to start up probably that Viking production in order to, to get a decent amount of anti air. He's going to have to start producing a lot more Marines in order to hold off those mutilisks well, if they do yeah. decide to come in. But they're yeah. sitting back. Luckily, the gold link mutilists, gold link mutilists, you know. So the gold link mutilists, their 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 prime mission objective is defend the base, <laughs> defend the base. Oh no. Uh, okay, okay. Pro tip, pro tip, guys. Pro tip. If you've got mutilists, you should probably be using their mobility to attack, attack, attack instead of just you know hang them out on your base. What do you think, Battles? Definitely. Mutalists are not good in head-up engagements. They're a harassment unit predominantly. Um, I know there may be some Protoss players who disagree with that once Mutalist numbers get up pretty high, but you know, generally speaking, you want to be using them to harass. Sitting back at home with them isn't too helpful. Gumio moving out with this nice little tank and marine force up to this top left base. Wow, battles! Gumiho is just letting it all hang out right here. He's against three enemy players and he's just going out with his tank marine force saying, screw that. Screw that, I'm gonna go out there anyways. And the blue Zerg! Oh no! Okay, okay. The blue Zerg runs away with the Zerglings against just two Marines and four tanks. Oh no! Oh no! And of course, this top left base has gone down as well. Yeah. This is a bit of a problem. The Mutalists are cleaning up the tanks. But they don't want to move in and engage the, the Marines, which, to be fair, they don't have any upgrades yet. Plus one infantry weapons is still a good couple of seconds away from completion. Oh, metals, metals. But, ooh, look at this. These Widow Mines, yeah. they've got a mission. They have a mission. But look at this massive Gumi. Gumiho says, screw this. I'm taking all my all of my uh, my allies' bases. I'm just going to wall in, man. I'm just going to wall in and, and try to out macro these guys. And he's doing a pretty good job of it at the moment. Um, the only person he's behind in terms of the work account is Blood, the teal Zerg oh, player, back, but only though. by a couple. Middle in the back of the space. They? They're they're attacking. They're attacking his base right now. So oh, Gumio got that CV, but ah, oh, the CVs are going down. But but this is the hero missile time. Three three kills, four kills, four Mutalist kills. Oh my God, battles! This is crazy to watch. This Mutalist, <laughs> these Mutalists is dying to the single <laughs> missile target. It is getting repaired down. Admittedly, Gumio lost six workers there, 
but it wasn't too bad because he's coming in for counterattacks. If we look at the right of the map, he's got a group of marines in here dropping like a madman. Going to be able to pick up a whole ton of SCVs. Nice. And he's going to be able to get the orbit command as well, probably. Nice. Oh, but look at the Teal Zerg. He is macroing. He is macroing. He's got 46 drones right now. Yeah, he still needs to get about another 20. Uh, 20 to 30 more would be good off of three bases. But, of course, Gumio. He's keeping all of the other players really highly contained, and that's a bit of a problem. Yeah, Gumiho is just working. He is working his economy right now. If you look, he's, he doesn't even have SCVs, SCVs going off of the second orb. Well, he didn't for a little while because you know, just he's 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 trying to find that balance between staying alive and getting his macro up. You know. Yeah, he's well. He's doing a good job. The armory is coming down here as well on the right hand side by this drop from Gumiho, which is just doing so much oh, damage. Nice. He's not even any resistance at all it's just sitting there um the mutilists though are coming to attack now they found Gumio's attempt to take a third but there's only like oh, four mutilists and they're running oh, 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 oh. oh Gumio doing is a hero drop oh my god so many SCP is going down holy smokes oh my god look at red he's he's almost killed every SCP that the red player has red uh, uh Rinzler is has. on he's three oh. SCPs right now and I don't know where the other two are. I can see one of them, but two are definitely missing. This is not good at the moment for the red Terran player. But the, the Teal Zerg does have a good number of mutilists ready to move in towards the third of Gumio. But then again, Gumio does have that. Oh no! Oh no, Gumio! Oh no! Gumio just lost like 20 marines to the, the mines in front of his base. Oh no! Oh, that's one of those those head, you know, head palm moments. You know, it's like you can't underestimate. Even though these guys are gold league, you know, you cannot underestimate them, you know, and it, oh man, just, just, no, Gumiho, did he see his, oh no, did, oh no, Gumiho, oh my god, oh, okay, okay, he's lucky, because if those three widow mines, because I don't know why he didn't scan, he's, 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 he has energy, and he saw half of his marine force die from the, oh no, yeah. I don't think he's looking over here. If I look at his vision, no, he's... Okay, he's now looking here. He's realized he's going to scan any second, I think. He was paying a lot of attention to it. But no, he's he's put the Marines over the top of them, but still it isn't going to scan to try and kill them. But he's got a lot of his attention moving in. Mutilus coming from the back, though, of this force. There's a lot of Mutilus there, but the Marines but doing great damage to yeah, them. Yeah, there's not enough. There's... Oh, but maybe there are... Oh, no! Oh, just enough. Oh, oh, Gumiho. Oh, he got he got cut there. Got, got cut between two, two forces. Well, it was there was just so much stuff there. That was the problem for Gumio, but he did trade relatively well. He's still dropping as well. <laughs> yeah, Top still left dropping. base Man, is getting taken drop. out. Hero drop over here. Oh my god. This is pretty frustrating. I'm, I'm going to say that much. It's very irritating getting dropped like this, especially for these lower league players who don't have the multitasking to be able to deal with it. Gumio as well. He's still sitting in a comfortable um, work count. He needs to keep producing those SCVs, getting more tanks out. He's in a good turtle up position, oh but the god. key thing Gubio is doing. Oh my god, this drop is just cleaning out the blue the blue Zerg. Oh my god. Amazing drop by Gumiho. He's you know he's staying behind the minerals here where he can blockade all of the incoming yep. Zerglings. If they do come, but they're not there. He's expecting some Zerglings to come in because that's what a pro player would do. But instead, uh, the blue Zerg has seems to have forgotten and he's pretty the blue zerg is basically out of the game right now he's got he's got nothing yeah almost. once that goes down he will be out of the game it's that simple he does have enough money to make more hatcheries and does have drones still but he's not going to be producing any units for a long time but i still think the biggest threat to gumio at the moment are the mutilists because there's 17 out massive of the field fight, oh, massive fight at the front yeah, they're just pushing straight up and in, and the Marines in such a good position. The tank sieged up really nicely oh, as well. Scan nice. goes to make sure the Widow are all gone. And there we go. Well, the Zerg player now left the game. The Red Terran left the game as well. It is now just Blood versus Gumio. Both of them left. Both of them left, yep. really. Well, oh, Gumio is actually... Sorry, Blood, the remaining Zerg player, is actually in a really good spot because he got all their resources. So he's currently got like just under a 10k mineral bank and a thousand. Yeah, so it starts 16 swarm hosts. Oh my god. So the, the question is now because I was looking. So when we were loading up the game, I believe that the Teal Zerg, he was in, in either Platinum or Crystal, right? I, I'm not sure. I can't remember. But, anyways, he, he, this, this kind of plays Platinum and Crystal. So we're going to see, you know, is it going to be enough? Is this, you know, economic advantage, this, this mineral advantage, is he going to be actually able to use it to defeat Gumi? you know my heart says maybe but my mind says no <laughs>
Well, as we can see, Gumio, he's pushing in. If he actually engages his swarm host army quickly, he can have a chance. But now that second wave's gone in, he's got to retreat. I don't think he can push into this. If he does it, it'll be an absolute miracle. The Locust oh. dealing good damage. The Mutal is coming in as well. And, wow, the Mutal is coming off a lot worse there. Even though it's only 1-1 one, one Marines up against 1-0 oh Mutas. But it's the Locust that are the big problem for Gumio at the moment. But he's trying to take out the bases. He's cleaned out all the Mutalists. And he's somehow winning this fight. My god, Marines! Overpowered! Overpowered! This is pretty crazy. Like, as we see, yes, this, well, the Swarm Host are all getting taken out, the Locusts are popping, but there's just so much blood now being forced to pull all of, well, a lot of his drones to try and engage this and buy some more time, but a quick pick up from Gumio, and he's out of there. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> I mean, he's still got almost 9,000 minerals and 1,500 gas. Oh my god, but can he use it? That's the problem, right? He's 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 got full energy queens on on his his hatcheries here, you know, and 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 uh, there's not many hatcheries. I don't think he's gonna be able to to do it. But you know, Gumiho lost a lot. Okay, he lost a lot in that attack, but it was just Marines, right? He wasn't really affected so much. Yeah, he's got a nice economy behind this as well. He's actually up on the work account by 11 compared to Blood. But all Blood coming with a lot of bailings at this right hand base. Whoa. And they are going to get some connects. A pickup, but a couple of Marines already went down. That was that was, that was was some good bailing usage. And oh, in the middle too. Oh, some good bailing usage. Not something you usually see from Gold League players, you know? Amazing. Yeah, this is... This is it, well, Gumio is doing an amazing job. Just it's the dropping that caused the big problem. Yeah, and that it drop. was a multitasking. Man, that was that was a that was a drop hack drop. That was a drop hack drop because after you know his drops basically forced the other two players to leave. They were like, "Screw this! Screw this!" They were like, I, "Did you see their chat? They were saying something about, oh, screw this!" You know, just Gumio, just Gumio. Oh man! So those drops really, well, he yeah. You know, you really see the moral the right effect here, right? You know, Maddo's like, what do you think? I mean, there's always a, a real a moral, morale effect from drops. What do you think? Yeah, it's, yeah, when you feel you can't defend them, and then they're coming down everywhere relentlessly, it's never going to be good. But Gumio, he is really pushing in for the kill here. Uh, just in terms of the army supply remaining, Gumio sitting at 153 to 19 of his opponent in terms of supply. Gumio's got this. Yeah, he's got he's got a big advantage. Yeah, this is it. This is game. I mean, you know, you've got ten thousand minerals. You've got fifty thousand minerals. If you cannot get the units out, and if you don't have the the control to use them, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. So that's that's what this game has really come down to. Yeah, there is an attempt by Blood to take a new expansion down at the bottom position of the map. He's making a lot of hatches everywhere, trying to stay in this game and win. But Gumio is in such an amazing spot at the moment. Yeah, and Gumio is not the type of player that's going to let uh, you know someone kind of you know macro back up for another ten minutes and you know and wait for him to get 200, 200. No, he's he's gonna he's gonna roll over that. It's just clean up time now. Yeah, he's just gonna start cleaning up absolutely everything, and there's a small chance. The blood could make something work. He does have these three bases up that Gumio doesn't know about at the moment um, or hasn't cleaned out at the moment. So he's keeping those. As long as he gets them all up, he's still got a huge bank, remember, because of the resources from his allies. He's sitting at 8,000 minerals and 2,000 gas. So potentially the Zerg could make something happen. But Gumio boosting around in these medevacs, making sure he picks off everything that he can find. Yeah, and Gumiho has a big bankroll. He is a high roller right now as well. He's got more than four thousand minerals and almost a thousand uh, gas. He's he's doing well too. He's he's no he's no popper. No, he's happily going through now. He's he's found most things. He's found this little hidden base. He's dropping on it. Killed off the lair. He's gonna kill off the spawning pool again. And this is almost without doubt GG now. Um, so we've sped up a little bit just to make sure that we see everything that's coming down because Gumio just slowly clearing up all of these bases is showing just how good he is. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> Blood could have a thousand spy, spy, or, uh, spines, but, you know, spine crawlers aren't going to win the game against a, a tank marine a medevac force. And, you know, just, again, you see how powerful that force is because, you know, you, you can you can move everything around so quickly with those medevacs. You know, you can heal your, your marines up front. The tanks do... A bunch of damage. It's just such a strong unit composition. 
Yeah, he's in a brilliant spot. He's there's an attempt here from Blood to just get as many spines down, as many hatches, but against Siege Tank, spine callers just won't work. The drop even coming in now, the medevac's gone in vision, and this is Gumio pushing in for the wing, cleaning out all of these spine crawlers, cleaning out the last remaining outreaches of the Zerg base. And yeah, it's a matter of time now. An attempt by Blood to try and make this work. He's got a bang, so he thinks he can do something, but there's no luck here. And there we go, Gumio was victorious. Yeah, GG Mantles, and I can only imagine after, after you know, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, guys, for the previous games, but I can only imagine after getting, you know, crushed in the early game by, by you know, those those ladder players, Gumio probably has a massive smile right just about now. Well, that was, that was a good win for Gumio. I'll give him that much. So, if you enjoyed, of course, FXO Outnumbered, make sure you like this video, leave a cool comment, and subscribe. And, Swister, we should be back in the next few days with another episode. Yes, absolutely. And, and everyone, please give us your feedback, your ideas, you know, what you want to see from our players. Because, I mean, uh, we're going we're gonna to try doing a 2 verse 4 in the future. You know, if you have some player that you really want to see play, you know, uh, you know, and and just go ahead and tell us. You know, give us some feedback. Our Facebook team FXO, and uh, of course here on YouTube as well. You know, team FXO. Um, you can see all of our other videos. Just you know, in the comments section or on Facebook. Just you know, leave us your your, your feedback. Leave us your ideas. We, I mean, uh, I'd love to see them. I'd love to to hear your your guys' input. Um, so again, yeah. So battles. That was that was awesome. I that was really that good was. Game. It should be. So we'll catch everyone next week. Thank you all very much for tuning in, and bye for now. Bye for now, everybody.